Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and today we have the one star British standard green tech anti snap Euro cylinder. And this uh, version of the Euro cylinder is relatively new. Um, here is the well, you still see the QC sticker on this one as well. Um, but this is uh, uh, the older no star British standard, so there's no British standard stars at all, no anti snap features on this um, on this lock. So uh, Green Tech have actually upgraded their Euro profile cylinders, which is really, really cool. Um, let me show you the, if I find the key again, yeah, let me show you the bitting on this lock as well. So, um, oh. So let me show you the bitting on this lock. Look at that key. This is really, really extreme. Now, I'll, I'll show you how it operates in the, the lock, but I just want you to notice that I've taken away the circlips on either side um, of this lock so that I can more easily disassemble it later when I come to pick it. What you don't want to do is insert the key and then pull out uh, the core, not remembering that you have removed the circlips. Only an idiot would do that. Okay, so, um, yeah, back to the extreme nature of the bitting here let's just take a short hook and imagine that we're going to go picking off this warding ledge here there we go uh, which corresponds to this line on the key we might even overset pin 2 just by inserting such a thin pick as a southward max pick and certainly if I was going to try and pick anywhere past pin 3 I would be oversetting this lock and that's really easy to tell because you just won't ever be able to set any of the pins inside um, now I actually had a, a bit of a go on this around a friend's house and I couldn't get anywhere with it with my standard kit the kit that I took with me um, around to their house and that's just because I didn't have the right pick um, I know a bad workman blames his tools but actually what I needed was this multi-pick pick here in 18,000 you can see it's nice and flexible and that is just deep enough shallow enough to mostly avoid oversetting pin 2 um, but also tall enough to set uh, pins 4, 5 and 6 so I mean that's theory anyway but it, it's a really really tricky lock um, and I think that it's made particularly tricky by this bitting. I've heard uh, rumours that the other one star um, cylinders are also tricky and have good bittings too. Uh, I haven't had experience of that but if they're anything like this then that's, that's pretty good going by Green Tech. I'm going to go grab a vise, throw it in and we'll have a go at picking this lock and then we'll gut it uh, properly this time. All right. Okay so here we are in the vise to make sure that we're all locked up there we go we will then do a bit of top of the keyway tensioning using a bit of bent wiper blade like this there we go and um, yeah let's have a go picking it so um, what I can do is just go long and um, try and find any binding pins uh, two definitely set but feels like it's actually already it feels like zero lift nothing on three something on six so I'm gonna go up and try and set six a nice little click there five now yeah four and <laughs> it's easy to trap your pick in there as well that's for sure okay let's go up to one two nothing on three where's my short hook I like to swap between you get a much better feel with a, a short hook like this on pin three now hmm, I'm gonna leave that alone okay go back to the back so six, five, four, that's four 
again. Let's try pin one. Nothing on one. Definitely nothing on two. Nothing on three. Something on four there. Working my way around the warding. Five seems fully set. Nice click on six there. Five, four, that felt like set. Three, two, one. Back to six. Feels like not quite set six. Five does feel set. Four wasn't. Six again. Five now. Don't know why it's so crunchy at the back. Six again. Work right around that warding. Okay, so I can feel the pins rattling, which means that they're probably set at the back. Six feels set. Five feels set. Four feels set. Little click off three. Nothing on two. Back to the back again. Notice how I wriggle around the warding to avoid oversetting the pins at the front. Six, five, mm, jam between four, three. Ah, oh, that was five, and we are open. Quite a tricky little pick, that. Um, it's surprisingly gritty inside there. Uh, the, the, I, I felt like I was setting the last three pins over and over again. I, I don't know why. Very, very odd. Um, definitely hard to navigate um, in this relatively tight keyway, even with a pick in 18,000th. Yep, I don't know what's going on in there, but um, we have an opportunity to find out because, of course, we can gut it and see what's inside. Um, there is a small ridge, can you see, down in the chambers? And that might be why I had to set these pins a couple of times, because I probably felt, get the pick up inside there, probably felt uh, the pin, the key pin set at this, well, the drive pin set at this position, as it goes past that first notch, and then as it hits a shear line. What's that little notch for? Well, it's because um, there's an anti-bump pin here, and that won't fall down further than that groove. So that won't um, sit all the way down into the keyway, as you can see there. It's sort of a short pin, which does need to be lifted up a little bit, um, like this. But it... Um, it won't contact a bump key at the same time as the other pins because it's sort of hanging in the air. It's, a, it's an interesting uh, mechanism. Um, so that's why it felt like I was setting these pins a few times because, and well, technically I sort of not was, but it gives the um, feeling of like a serrated pin. It's very odd, um, especially combined with the spools. Luckily, the spools are in positions 
two and three, so you have to contend with three with um, position two being a zero lift pin, which is that really really tricky super low cut on the key, which is here. So we are lucky that this ball was um, here rather than say in this position or this position. That being said, it wasn't a, a push over this lock by any means, and and it was a really good fun lock. The spools themselves are actually nice and thin as well. These are just some anti-drill um, bars which go into the front of the lock and you can see there's a steel driver pin there that acts as a third anti-drill defence. It's got a sacrificial cutaway on the underside there which corresponds to the um, if I remove this front loader oh. I'm bending all the springs as well. I'm not having a lot of luck with this lock, am I? Um, this is a, a sort of little um, insert which goes into the lock there to protect um, uh, the lock a little bit. That's all it does. It doesn't do anything else. And, and there's all the uh, copper springs. Right, I'll go and piece this lock back together again. And uh, all I can say is thank you all for watching. I think that this little one-star cylinder punches above its weight. Um, and I'll see you all next time.